Cross it. Hey everybody, Dr. O here. In this video, we're going to talk about the descending motor pathways in the spinal cord. So I don't make a huge deal out of this, but I do want to make sure you're familiar with these terms. I want to start with what's called a motor homunculus. A homunculus is a functional mapping of the primary motor cortex, which would be the pre-central gyrus of your frontal lobe. And you can see here, it's a funny looking human because the larger the structure, the more nervous input it receives. So as you can see, the, the hand and fingers are really big. The mouth is really big. The tongue is really big because there's a lot of the nervous system is used to control those areas. Notice that how small the trunk is because it doesn't take as much motor innervation to control those areas even though they're physically larger. So that's a motor homunculus. Here we see the, the descending pathways. So just general rule of thumb with your descending pathways, look, they should either start with the term cortico, meaning they start in the cerebral cortex, or most of them will end in spinal, which means they're going from the cortex to the spinal cord. That's a reminder that they're descending tracks, they're descending pathways. The two most important ones by far are the two corticospinal tracks. So they start in the motor cortex and they, and they control your body by traveling down to the spinal cord. We have the anterior corticospinal tract, which is about 15% of them. And this one travels down the same side of the spinal cord. And then you have the lateral corticospinal tract, which is 85% of the corticospinal nerves. And they actually are going to uh, cross to the other side before traveling down the spinal cord. So I can show you that here. So notice in the end, they both do cross over though. The uh, lateral corticospinal tract is, is decussating there or crossing in the pyramids. The anterior corticospinal tract travels down the spinal cord but then crosses over. So remember, the right side of the brain controls the left side of the body, left side of the brain controls the right side of the body. So those are your two corticospinal tracts, by far the most important. Um, this one's not on here, but the cortical bulbar tract is the other part of this motor control system or your somatic nervous system. It sends information from the primary motor cortex to the face, head, and neck. So it helps control the movement of the face, head, and neck. That's called the cortical bulbar tracts. Next, and these are not near as important, I just want to make sure you're familiar with the terms in case you hear them. Then next we have the reticulospinal tracts, and there's two different groups, both medial and lateral, so they can be further broken down. So they, they, these are going to be subconscious control of reflex activity, but these can be broken down even further into the vestibulospinal tract, tectospinal tract, and rubrospinal tract. So the two that are considered the medial are vestibulospinal tract with the vestibule, so it receives information from your inner ear, and it helps regulate balance and postural muscle tone. That's the vestibulospinal tract you see there. Tectospinal tract, this is gonna be, this is gonna receive information from your, from visual, but also auditory information, like light, movement, sounds, these kind of things, is gonna send information to the tectospinal tract, and it's gonna be responsible for the subconscious regulation of eye, head, neck, and upper limb position. So like if I hear something, I'm gonna look towards the sound like that. If I, uh, if I see something moving, I'll track it. That's the tectospinal tracts that do those. The last group is rubro spinal tract, which rubro means red from the red nucleus, this is going to be subconscious regulation of upper limb muscle tone and movement. So those are going to be all the descending pathways. The cortical spinal tracts are the only ones that I really expect you to know much about. But those are all your descending motor pathways as well as the functional map of where this information is coming from, the motor homunculus. I hope this helps. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.